Hello everyone. I'm happy to welcome you to our first knowledge shortcut in English. Uh, what I want to discuss today is the interaction of processes and structure and this is within our capture of our knowledge shortcut structure series. The idea is to show PLM digitalization and all you have to do from a theoretical point of view. And first of all the question is how do processes and structure interact? So why is this important? So maybe you once were at a company and somebody told you, please, you, you want to introduce PLM for, uh, for sure, and somebody told you, please, first of all, look on the processes. So, which is right. But in the end, if you look what the consulting or the consultants are doing, they look on structures. And so they was told to look on model processes, but in the end, they think in structures. So the question is, is this wrong or why do they all think in structures? And we'll draw pictures with structures and everybody says model processes. So there is something, yeah, we, we have to go deeper in and I will show how, and this is the next slide, I will show how processes and structure are interacting and out of this we can create a completely new view to perceive the PLM process, to perceive the way we make models from uh, our products. Okay, first of all, on a high level we have a management process. And what we see today at our customers is that they start to model their processes, they start to think about the processes and often they then introduce a process management. But in the end, if they go deeper and deeper and deeper, they realize, now if I'm too deep, I cannot model processes anymore. So I have a customer and they say, sales, this is very interesting. They say, they model a process together with the process guys and they say, I do not follow my process. And the process guys say, yeah, but you modeled your process on your own. So you see, that's crazy and here's the reason why. Okay, we have the management process and out of the management process a lot of, let's say, daily processes which the engineers are doing is started and in the end the result of the process, which is information, comes to a model. I call it partial models and we will have a knowledge shortcut where we go deep in the theory of the partial models. So this model could be, for example, typical uh, E-bomb or it could be a bomb in SAP or whatever. So what they're doing then? Then a follow-up process takes information out of this model, do something with it, with it, create something and put it in another model. And then there may be another process step and it goes back to the management process. So you see what is happening there outside in companies they have processes, nobody knows what kind of processes these are and in the end they fill in information in a model. So you can do it uh, on another way and look to other models and you see that you put out all the information, put them in, in typical models. So the question is what are the typical models in the product development process and this is easy. Today we have the bomb, so this is the standard, the gold source for production. Anyhow, before you have the bomb, you have in the end the drawings. So not the drawings, the documents, which are the 3D documents in between, and you have for sure cut bomb. But now, today, we are discussing about multi-structure concepts. What does that this mean? That means we have a cut bomb, we have then an E-bomb, and we have an M-bomb, and out of the M-bomb we create the bomb in the SAP. So you see, these balls are the different bombs and how they are connected. And we have processes which are interacting with these models. So now if you see and understand this, you see these structures are linked together because the material may be in the bomb is also a material in a PLM system in a, uh, in a M bomb. So it's not the same, but they are connected. Because they are, or there are different models. Anyhow, now we can classify our processes, which means that we say, okay, down there near the models, 
we have the daily engineering processes. Nobody can model the daily engineering processes. Nobody knows really what the engineers are doing. They're doing whatever. So, <coughs> above the daily engineering processes, we have the, the layer with the explicit stable processes, which have an official character. What does that mean? So, if you, let's say, you have a release, the release is an explicit process. You say, now I move start a formal process and now I do a release and now this is released. So you, let's say, uh, bring this in a system with a, uh, with a workflow. So this is what you typically are doing. But you cannot, and this is also an important message, you cannot tie the engineers to formal processes. A formal company will never really work good. So let's say you can do here or have here processes and models and the processes should be very open. The important thing is, in the end, that the engineers deliver the information in his model in the right time. Okay, why have I shown you this to you? Uh, the background is that if you model or know the models, if you know the semantic of the model and how they interact, it is not so much necessary to model here the processes. So in this layer you can model the processes and this is very important. In this layer it is enough to think about the models and to what point in time, what kind of information has to be in the model and how they interact. Okay, anyhow, this was the first time, you see I'm at the end, a knowledge shortcut in the, or about the topic of structure theory in PLM digitalization and I'm very happy that you have watched it and I hope you like it and watch the next also. Thanks a lot.